In 1984, there could be no more songs close to the heart than those on the chart. This week, you will love them, I'm sure. Great top 10 this week, blasting out of the tranny courtesy the 4IP Radio Good Guys on March 11th, 1984. The Titanic 10 was up from number 26, Relax, by Frankie Goes to Hollywood. Only lasting three weeks in the top 10, it's a bit of a mystery that it didn't do any better, but I suspect the meddlesome state government censors may have had something to do with it. Nifty number nine was Culture Club with Victims, the weakest single colour by numbers. It's a brave choice for a single, but it would have done better as a final single from the album rather than follow up to the number one everywhere in the universe that was Karma Chameleon. The great eight was Paul Young with Love of the Common People. Young was a pretty good singer who is unfortunately best remembered for singing the first line of Do They Know It's Christmas in place of the absent David Bowie. He only managed four top 20 hits on the charts. Every Time You Go Away probably deserved to be a bigger hit than number 20, but there were far less capable singers having bigger hits in that era. 7 is The Curly Shuffle, a song with which I, as a compulsive Stooges watcher, was mortified beyond words. It is trite, utterly unmemorable, and surprisingly a bigger hit than All I Need Is A Miracle by Mike and the Mechanics. In at Super Sexy 6, motoring up the charts is one of the best love hits of the 80s, Girls Just Wanna Have Fun by Cindy Lauper. Originally Boys Just Wanna Have Fun when written in 1979, Lauper was given the song to record for her first album and it was she who suggested the lyrical rewrite and changes to the arrangement which emphasised her quirky vocal delivery. The record made number two in the USA and the UK and number one pretty much everywhere else including three weeks in my sunny little town, two weeks nationally. This fun-filled video with this Marx Brothers homage was a big selling point for the record. They managed to make it for chump change by hiring Lauper's friends to be in it, stopping people on the streets and asking them if they wanted to be in a video, and playing the record for Lorne Michael who liked it so much that he agreed to let them use Saturday Night Live's video editing suite if Law promised to perform on the show. 5, or Femme as we say in the land of my recently discovered Norwegian forebears, is Queen with Radio Gaga. If there's one thing Queen knew how to do, it was to place a top 40 hit. But by this, and it was far from their last top 40 hit in Australia, they seem to have forgotten how to be Queen. This lacks the flash and the spark and the mischief of their best work and just sort of plods along inoffensively with the emphasis on plod. It is time for hello and goodbye, where we say hi to the comers and goers from this week's top 10. In this week, our girls just want to have fun, which came from number 20 to number 6 in only its second week on the charts. Also racing up the listing was Relax by Frankie Goes to Hollywood from 26 to 10. We say goodbye to the forgettable Nobody Told Me by John Lennon and the iconic coming of age story Come Said the Boy by Mondo Rock after 5 and 8 weeks in the 10 respectively. The next number one record, which took over from Girls Just Want to Have Fun, which held it for three weeks, is my birthday number one for the year, and it wasn't even on the charts this week. It seemed to be an era of rapid rises to the top. Time now for the trade-up, the new segment which is causing sensation across the nation. And we're going to look at the records today which were on the top 40 this week, but never made the top 10 and probably deserved that honour, more so than some of the records on the top 10 this week. Curly Shuffle, I'm looking right at you. We're going to bring in with Tina Turner, who's Let's Stay Together, which was the first step in her comeback which made her such a formidable force on the charts from 1985 to 1994. It was on for six weeks and peaked at Amiga number 21. The other record on the charts this week is The Love Cats by The Cure, which peaked at number 13 and only spent nine weeks on the chart. This record had the goths around my town in paroxysms of agony crying, they've sold out, they've sold out. They've sold out and everybody who had shares in the black nail polish stocks took a hosing on the market that week. Back to the charts this week and in at four, it'll be the rather pointless Boy georgia like isms of Marilyn with Calling Your Name. Four was as good as it got for this one hit and you're done sign of the time. And what lay ahead for Marilyn? Well, the usual career of increasingly poor returns on releases, drug addiction, obscurity, flailing desperately for attention, desperate comeback bids, and finally appearing here on the past as a foreign country. But it must be acknowledged, through Marilyn's groundbreaking work, it did pave the way for such stunning and brave superstars as Dylan Mulvaney, Sam Smith, Demi Lovato, Trisha Paytas and Bob the Drag Queen. So thanks a lot Marilyn, we salute you. Can we perhaps have a little rock and roll on the list this week and see it number three? 
Well, yes, indeed we can. It's in the much-beloved form of Pat Benatar and her classic hit Love is a Battlefield, attended by one of the first long-form high-concept videos. Benatar, a much underrated singer given her powerful voice, not too stagey, not too theatrical, but tremendously authentic, managed to push through a convincing performance of Peter Pan's Wild Boys Run Amuck somewhere on the streets of Los Angeles except they're girls. It's a bold record, for normally she prefers the tougher, more guitar-led arrangements, but this one fits very nicely somewhere in between Cindy Lauper's street-level Disneyland fluff and Madonna's disco redemption Disneyland fluff. It's a much-beloved artifact of the time. It made it all the way to number two and was on the top 40 for four months. Number two, after five on top, it's an all-time classic pop. It's a killer dilla, which is not vanilla. It's Michael Jackson's bangin' thriller. Possibly the best song on the biggest selling album of all time, Thriller does suffer as part of that collection from being placed on the end of a side one of the album as opposed to being the big hit Do It Till You Drop track that finishes off the album. The single though suffers no such impediment. It's a terrific dance floor crammer. It's Michael at his best that he ever got and the best Michael ever got was the best anyone ever got and the video of course is astonishing but it's much more as a cultural phenomenon. The entire Michael Jackson thing of 1982 to 84 was dazzling and total. Even with stellar talents like Prince and Madonna who could have dominated all on their own emerging, it was a sort of interregnum with the tours and the Jacksons which allowed the world to catch up and then the whole hyping back up again for the bad album and the 1987 tour before the sad end and inevitable cycle began. But this is where we can remember one of the very, very greatest of the very, very greatest artists making some of his very, very greatest works and like the very, very greatest pop music, it's art you can dance to. Michael Jackson always makes me happy. Now, before we get too carried away with things, here's a whole fanciful world of facts. It's Val's fantastic world of facts. The biggest climb this week on the charts was Frankie Goes to Hollywood with Relax, which was up 16 places from 26 to 10. Oh dear. The biggest drop this week was The New Moon on Monday by Duran Duran, which was down 14 places to the number 25 spot. The highest debutante this week was in at number 29, the invincible Mr. Lionel Richie with Running With The Night, one of the actual better entries in the run of soft funk hits that he had at the time, and the emeritus record on the charts, the longest lasting one, and one of the longest lasting records we will ever see in the charts here was currently 18 weeks in, and it was the magnificent Islands in the Stream by Kenny Rogers and Dolly Parton. On top this week in the US was Jump by Van Halen, which was having a good long run at the peak spot. And in the UK, it was 99 Luft Balloons, or 9 and Annoying Deadlift Balloons, by Nina, which was also having a substantial run at the top. A mere year ago on top of the charts here in my hometown was Gloria by Laura Branigan, and a year's time, we will have sunk to the depths of it being I Want to Know What Love Is by Foreigner. I hang my head in shame. Not too many points in guessing what the number one album was this week here in town. Of course, it was Thriller by Michael Jackson. But what may come as a surprise to some folks was that for all its domination of the charts for two years, Thriller only spent 11 weeks at number one, which is incredible. I mean, Hot August Night spent 27 weeks at number one, but that was altogether a different fatal of kitsch. That wraps up the facts, but it's time for the monkey who gives those skins a whack. Come on, monkey, come on down and massacre those tubs. And the number one record this week is... <laughs> Written by our hometown heroes, Barry and Robin and Mo Gibb, it's Islands in the Stream by Kenny Rogers and Dolly Parton. I think it's a sign of the times that in those days, Kenny Rogers was the higher build attraction than Dolly Parton. It would have been a good long while since that sort of incident was the case, and in this particular case, it'll be a lot longer, given that Kenny is not around anymore to make records with Dolly, on account of a nasty case of the deads. But look, it's a terrific song. It's tuneful, it's lyrically clever, it's sung with considerable charm and conviction by Rogers, who was never anything less than an authentic and warm vocalist, and Parton, who is, as usual, simply spectacular. Again, not a record at number one for any long period of time, but it was in the top 10 for almost six months. And on the charts for over eight, there's simply one of the biggest cumulative hits we've ever had in this city. And man, it was welcome every time it came on the radio. So there we have it, the top 10 for the week, ending 11th of March, 1984. I do hope you found it enjoyable and accept my assurance that should the good Lord be willing and the creeks don't rise, we will be back with another installment in a week or so. Wish.